What's happening, everybody? It's Ike for Flipside Music, and welcome to What the Fact, Season 3, Episode 39. We missed last week due to some technical effery that didn't want to work with us, and we just finally gave up and said, the hell with it. Yeah, we hit one of those like weird microcosms of technical problems that yeah. crops up every once in a while. So we're like, F that, we're going to the poop. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to the poop. We're going to the poop. <laughs> and have ourselves a pint. I can't wait till uh, that place opens up over here. Yeah, yeah, that'd that's be, that'd actually be nice. Pretty, yeah. Um, oh, so if you're new, yeah, sorry. If you're new here, question and answer show weekly done. You ask questions, we give answers of some kind. Yeah. So, um, was yeah, that a robot was, like the like the? I don't know. How I'm doing. Well, like, so what were those robots that would put like you'd ask them shit and they would spit out like the little ticket? Bitty, bitty, bitty. What's up, Buck? Yeah, something like that. Was Buck Rogers. Oh, was it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, bitty, bitty, bitty. (laughs) What's up, Buck? (laughs) (laughs) It was this little dude. Well, yeah. Oh, with a thing, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, almost he like would, uh, Lost in Space, where it's just a guy in a weird, like, a bunch of, like, uh, what was it, washing machine parts and shit? Because it was like, oh, a lot yeah, of hosing yeah, yeah. from, yeah. Yeah. Warning. Warning, Will Warning. Robinson. Yeah. Warning. <laughs> yeah, the bitty, 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 what's up, Buck? He was like the, he was like the, the OG Flava Flav. <laughs> it's just a, the original yeah. hype guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody get up. Get up! <laughs> 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 uh, well, we uh, went off the rails already. Okay, so, uh, you start out. Alright. Uh, Mr. Colin James, he's actually got two questions this week, so we're going to start with the first one, which is, uh, I don't get to play loud very often, but I'm pretty happy with the low volume sounds that he gets from his Rev G20. Uh, he said, that said, a not- there's a noticeable difference when playing at the full 20 watts with the volume at noon or greater. Um, he says the amp just really comes alive, and he's wondering if there's any other amps that we think sound great played at bedroom volumes. Um, well, honestly, I was going to say, I, th- I feel like the G20 is, it's just, I agree that yes, like almost all amps have like a sweet spot yeah, volume-wise. Some are, and some of it's when they, right. when they're cooking. Yeah, you know, Marshalls. I think are kind of one very much yeah because even those like even if you get those really cooking and then roll your you know your volume from the guitar down you still get that like that driven kind of martially clean sound but you don't get as much of that when it's at that low volume and right i actually feel like mesas are kind of in that vein of things too like they do sound good at low volumes like the the mark five even in the 10 watt mode it sounds good but it's not the same thing as like when you can really get after it and i mean honestly that might just be a human ear thing it like, could be. It just feels like it opens up. I mean, well, like too, like you when know. you're when you get enough volume, there's like a spot where you start to feel like you're kind of enveloped in the sound. Whereas, like when amps, especially smaller amps, when they're at low volumes, it just it can sound real small and kind of boxy and tinny. Yeah. Um, I, so to answer the question, because we'll dance around that for a bit. I mean, you know, I don't. Want, it, it's hard to. Well, I think he's got a good one. That's why I'm like, yeah. it's hard to think of many things. I mean, I think honestly, for me, I think amps that sound best at volume, at a, like just bedroom volume, find kind of fall more into the solid state category. Yeah, actually, like, yeah, because you get more of a consistent. Of, yeah, you get a it's consistent sound same, all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. You're just lowering the dBs essentially. So, yeah. for me, I think you, you hear that in like the Boss Next tone, where you yeah. get a nice tone out of it. Even while you're not killing people, right? You know, I think the katana is another great one because I, I mean, I have a katana that I use pretty often, mm-hmm. and in at bedroom level, it sounds great. You know, it sounds great cranked up too. But I think some of the stuff that's on the solid state side, yeah, because you're right, a little it, bit it's, more consistent it's with that. not as dependent on getting the like the tubes and the power amp and the whole thing cooking. Right. Yeah, because you kind of get the same thing, just like you said. It's more of an attenuation of volume. Um, the ID Core, like from Black Star. Yeah. Another one. It kind of has a good. Well, I was gonna side, say, you know, volume X2 from Fender, the Champ Super Champs. Right. You well, know. and Colin does have the G20, which has the two notes built in. Because I was gonna say, my other suggestion would be, and this was kind of a lifesaver when I was doing the Pack Rat demo is having a you know a good solid tube amp that is you know solid wattage but go ahead and running because i just attenuated it down so it was quieter in the room since i was doing it at night 
uh, but it still gave me that, like, it still sounded noticeably better than just the Iridium. I mean, the Iridium's good, but, like, having the two, having the, like, the MiG-50 going into the two notes captor was noticeably better. And then, honestly, too, like, the noise gate was a huge lifesaver, too. So, like, anything, like, you can do, you know, the Oxbox or the captor or anything like that, I feel Lots like... Lots of craft tube expanders. And yeah, you can get a lot further with your tube amp at lower volumes, and I... St now that's more of a recorded sound, but I think it I think it's worth it for that because you still get that tube interaction cuz like some pedals just when they hit tube amps it's just a different it's a different thing cuz I kept trying the pack rat with the iridium and it was just it was almost acting more like an overdrive or a boost more than it was acting like a full distort even on like the Fender channel it kept giving it more of like an overdriven sound rather than a just straight distortion sound. And so sometimes I think having the tube amp, if you really want to preserve that part of it, like a captor and ox box might be another move. Yeah. To get, you know, lower volumes, but still get the quality of sound. Or the Waz tube expander. Yes. I yeah. I, always, I do too. keep forgetting. Yeah, I, do, I throw yeah, that in there too, because yeah. it's, it's actually, I know everybody loves the ox box, but that tube expander is a really cool piece of equipment. If you guys haven't checked it out, I've, I watched a few videos that were deep dives into that thing and it was like, yeah. I well, that is pretty much their answer to like the Oxbox and yeah. the Captor. Yeah. Uh, the Captor X is one of those things too. Like if you have a good ear yourself, you can dial that thing to do pretty much any any cabinet or any sound you would need. You just gotta you know spend some time with it. Yeah, you got to work it. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. Nothing here says question for next week, which is this week. Yeah. What's your preferred solution to the sixty cycle hum of single coils? That's question number one. Question number two, do you use a gate? Question number three, noise suppressor. Well, Which is a gate, solid. yeah. Yeah, do you use a, a gate or a noise suppressor? Yeah. A specific pedal that removes the hum, EQ, or do you just embrace the hum? Speaking of embracing the hum, that's an expression I actually have to use a lot. So we're going to eventually do a t-shirt with that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're awesome, you embrace the hum. There well, you go. yeah, <laughs> well... I mean, what's your solution for? No, I, I get it. So if, number one, if I didn't have people that were understanding, like, because Jake doesn't mind because he's sort of old school about his stuff too. Yeah. So he's yeah. like, it's part of it, but it's it's like kind of having the P ninety right. thing. I'm not a big fan of the buzz, but you know, when you start going, it, the the you just the, don't the stop hum, playing, is what you're saying. Yeah, the hum <laughs> aggravates me when you stop. Right. No, that is so really like, easy. But if yeah. you're playing in a band setting, it doesn't matter because you're just playing, you're doing your thing, and it's great. It's like if you're at home practicing bedroom level, that might drive you crazy depending. Right. First things first, though, I would say is shield the cavity. Yeah, do what you can to do what reduce you can the hum. To reduce the hum. Yeah. Like bring that shit down as best right. you can. Um, and then after that, I think it becomes, uh, you know, embrace the hum. You could, yeah, you could certainly use a noise gate. There, There's a few of them that I think do it well, but you also end up sacrificing, or at least in my experience, even the best noise gates, you do sacrifice some sustain. Because, yeah. like, as that signal, especially with single coils, as that signal is kind of tailing off and the volume starts to drop and that output gets smaller, the gate just lops it off at a certain point. And it doesn't give you that natural just kind of fade off. And it, I think, depending on the genre, like, like with blues or anything like that, there's no way I would use a noise gate only because of that, because you don't get the natural you dynamics. The, yeah, you're, yeah, you're you're gonna take you're taking something off that you actually want. Right. It's kind of like a, um, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Compressor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. So it's taking your great. dynamics away. Yeah. Yeah. Compression is great for certain things or certain things that you're doing, but also like for me, kind of playing more of the bluesy stuff. I want the attack. I don't want it to Yeah, if you want to dig in, you want that volume and that jump to be there. If you want right. to back off, you want it to get quieter. Right. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, depending on the genre for sure, because like for metal, and actually, you know, pe people try to say you can't do metal with single coils. That's not true. You can do it anything. You can do any of that with anything. You just got to, you know, spend some time dialing it in. Yeah. But I think for metal, yeah, that 60 cycle hum, it can jump up in between those notes. So, yes, in that case, you probably do want a noise gate, and you probably want one that's that's quick like mm -hmm. in terms of you know how it jumps on and jumps off without completely just gutting your tone yeah yeah um but yeah other than that yeah i would say if you're an old school guy then just kind of or old school player yeah. just kind of uh embrace the hum because i think it's part of it and sometimes you know there are some like noiseless pickups that are cool 
But sometimes, like, I, I feel like a lot of the regular just noiseless single coils, not the P90s, but, like, right. the regular single coils, you, you lose some of the, like, that signature jangle. Like, yeah, that signature, like, stratty sound or telly mm -hmm. sound, you lose that when you start doing some of the noiseless stuff. Yeah. Like, I got a set of noiseless P90s, mm -hmm. obviously, in the Tele Deluxe. And I really like it. You know, I really, I think they did a great job, you know, making them noiseless, but they still have a bite to them. Right, it's it still has that right signature. It still has yeah. a signature kind of tone of a P90 that comes through, and I don't have to listen to that buzzy shit. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, there's there's a few ways to go about it these days. Um, the only thing one he had in here, I think, was EQ or specific pedals that remove the hum, which would be like the hum debugger, that one. Um, yeah, that one does really good. That the one's silencer. really good. I just wish it was smaller because, like, the yeah. hum debugger, it does what it does very well, but it sh it's obnoxiously large for what it is. And I think most people too, like, if I they could put it in the silencer. Well, right, the that, container would be better. Right, and I what I don't understand too, even with Rev, like, I appreciate it's probably just because they had that pedal size already, but like, if you know, if you could get it down to the mini pedal size, like that's the magic spot for a noise gate, I think, because if it's small, somebody you know, you could stick it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You could just stick it. You <laughs> could stick it anywhere. Yeah, except the F hole we found. Yeah, out recently. you can't yeah. stick it in your uh, humidifier in up the your F, -hole. F hole. Yeah, no humidifier in the F yeah. hole. No humidifier in the F hole. We found that out. We also found out from Wolf that once you make a sausage, there's no way out. Yeah. Yep. It's, it, Little known fact. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. once you make one, there's just yeah. there's no way out. That's yeah. it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's funny. Uh, okay, so moving on. RJB says, "What do you use on amps to clean them? Like Tolex and dust really starts to show. Uh, could you use some water and soap? But was curious what you guys might use. Love the channel. Thanks, guys." Thanks, RJB. We appreciate you uh, watching. Yeah, thanks so, for the question. This is a good question that's more practical than than uh, than some. Um, I think the... the so oh, yeah. It, we're going to go with probably the same place because this is what we have at the shop. Is the Music Nomad um, amp cleaner. And that stuff is awesome. Like It, it, does it actually does job. a really good job. It, and makes, it smells nice. It does. It smells nice. It makes stuff look... Literally takes... 20 years off of some stuff because yeah. we've used it on some amps that probably have not been cleaned in 20 plus maybe even 30 plus years yeah. and it made it look like amazing like i remember uh that uh what was the fiber locks i think we, mm -hmm. we used it on that and it like it almost made it look like a reissue by the time it was all cleaned up um, now what it does do but other things do it's not like um armor all where like you put it on you just slippery and yeah, shiny like and a greasy. greased turkey yeah it's yeah. not uh it's not it doesn't leave the tolex like that that's one thing that i like yeah it doesn't, it doesn't leave, feel like it's all slippery slidey well and i was gonna say too unlike soap and water it doesn't because like soap and water if you don't get it all wiped off, off you'll get a sheen or like a, a kind of a foggy residue and uh, I don't think that looks that much better than dust. So usually we go with that Tolex cleaner from Music Nomad. And honestly, until we use that, like I didn't really use anything because I didn't think. Just I mean, water, yeah, right? just water. Just yeah, water. I didn't really, and I didn't know. But now that we have that stuff, like I, that's the only stuff I would actually use because it it well, really what we do use. I mean, yeah, we use it at the shop when we're cleaning up use gear like well, yeah, we use pretty the much amps and yeah, we just, use it on every amp too before before we if we got to ship one out. Um, you know, I did it this morning was wiping down that little fender X2 and it's just like it's a good thing that makes everything look like, like nice and fresh So yeah, yeah, nice and fresh So that's the answer to RGB. Yes. I'd say music nomad Tolex cleaner. cleaner. Yeah, yeah, yep, Tolex cleaner. That's the that stuff is yes. Gold we got to do video for like stocking stuff or type shit. We do and that would be a good one that that like you'd be surprised because it's like it is actually kind of fun and exciting to see an old nasty looking amp coming out looking way better after you use that stuff. So we should maybe we do a demo video. It's yeah. not sexy, and I know I yeah. get like four views, but at least we'll do those like the, four people like a, will the two space give, thing yeah. where it like <laughs> and it like does all the little sparkly bits. Mach <laughs> yeah. five out of six amp techs say that Music Nomad Shine On right. is your best cleaner. Hey. Okay. All right, next Call one. James uh, again. Yeah, number two. Uh, his is, what are some upcoming album releases or shows you guys are looking forward to? Ooh, I don't Actually, know about album releases, but I do have answers for shows. Which oh, are good. I got, the same. Well, I was going to say, yeah, we got the same for that. And then one of those bands that we have the tickets for is also putting out a new album, which is why that tour is happening. So oh. Earthless is actually, yeah. So Earthless and Sleep are coming to town. 
So those are going to be <laughs> two. But also, okay, so those are two shows that we're looking forward to. We're both going to that. Kind of sucks um, though, because all them witches is the same night that Earthless is. So. I had to decide between Earthless and All Them Witches, so... Even though I love All Them Witches, Earthless still wins, because... Like, that's it. Earthless is an experience, so if they're coming anywhere near you guys, like, go see them. Go see them. It's not a a small... Yeah, it's not like a crazy show, yeah. So it's going to be... Because Sleep's playing at uh, Mission Ballroom, right? Right, which I have not been there. Have you? I haven't been to Mission yet. Okay. Yeah, because Jake was telling me that it's expandable. It's like, pretty, he, yeah, because he said it can go from like twenty five hundred to like six thousand or some shit. So, oh, okay. So, so it's it, an expandable venue, whatever that it's means. It's definitely bigger than HQ. Yeah, where which is like a uh, yeah, a few hundred people. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a killer show though. Yeah, and no, I, I haven't been to HQ yet either. No, I'm not since they've revamped it. When it was Three Kings, right? Um, so yeah, nobody knows what that shit is anyway. Well, not our um, local dudes do, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, go see Earthless and Sleep if they're coming to your town. <laughs> to Corrosion and Conformity. Oh, they're coming through? I didn't realize with, that. Um, I got that, thought that got canceled again. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Hopefully not. That, me and Gordo were talking about it. It's oh. at the Oriental. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see that it's, one, too. Um, there's somebody else. There's well, like two other bands that are coming, too. Well, keep hoping Fu Manchu will work eventually. Yeah, Fu Manchu, whenever they get yeah. back, whenever that happens. I mean, it will be April. Well, yeah, because I was going to say, we've been... We've not only looked forward to that show for two years, but we've had it canceled like three times now. So, oh, so which sucks. Yeah, been looking Cats forward to that go. since. Yeah, I want to hear a lot of fuzz. And, yeah, in Brock. I want to hear fuzz into a fuzz into a Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> so, what was the other one? Was it Clutch? No. Guar's coming. Oh, really? If you want to go see Guar. <laughs> um. But yeah, the, I think those were the main ones we were looking forward to. I can't think of. Anybody else? But granted, these days, I mean, I I have a lot more fun with the smaller, like the smaller bands and the smaller venues. Like, I don't really anything that would arrive at Pepsi Center, I don't really pay attention to anymore. Yeah, it's just a, or whatever the hell the a building's mill- called now. It's it's Ball Pepsi Arena. Center. Ball yeah. Arena. Ernie, Is it Ernie Ernie Balls Ernie Arena? Arena. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you yeah, make sure you try out the Ernie Balls. Yeah, just head down to Ernie's Balls Arena. <laughs> Ernie, Ernie Balls Straps Arena. Oh boy. Um, yeah, I mean, the last show I saw there was Megadeth. Oh, okay, was just, yeah. How was I mean, that? It was, you know, there's nowhere nowhere else to see. I'm not going to see Megadeth at HQ. Well, no, no. You know, that would be cool. I yeah. would fucking love that, but... No, I saw them once at, uh... I think they played at the... It's whatever the arena that DU uses. I don't know if they own it or if they just, like... Uh, I don't know. But, yeah, it's a smaller sort of, you know, like, smaller stadium. And um, that was actually really fun. That was a really good show. It was uh, Anthrax Slayer and um, Megadeth and one. Uh, yeah, so it was basically three. It was three out of the big four, and so it was pretty fun to see them at that show because got pretty much right up front. But it was not. I was kind of off to the side where the moshing wasn't as crazy. Because I, I like to mosh, but I also, you know, I love to watch the guys actually play. Um, I'm too old for that shit. Yeah. Well, I yeah. moshed when I was young. Yeah. No, well, I'm not, I'm, yeah. No, so you much younger. I'm not that old. I'm not dead yet, but I don't really need that shit. Yeah, no, like, well, that, like I said, I'm, I'm uh, for like my whole life, whoever the biggest, weirdest dude in the audience is, is always going to find me and try to start some shit. So, yeah, we, I'm good with just kind of like, yeah, I'm here to like actually watch the band that we paid for to see. It. Yeah, we kind of share that experience. Or no matter where, like, we're not small. No. No matter where we stand, everybody has to go past us. Right. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. always getting bumped into all of the whole shows. What a, uh, yeah, I don't know. All right. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, those are all good ones. And then, uh, yeah, I think we got one last question from Ben. One last, uh, last question from Ben Coons, who asks, uh, for next week, uh, what's your favorite capo? I think he's been hitting the green again because we had this one like a few weeks ago. Yeah, he? I think he probably or maybe, forgot a, that he maybe it was a few months ago. Maybe it's been too much of green for me or something. But I know we've had this one. It's still a good one though, especially with the Christmas season. Uh, I'm gonna go with the same answer I think I did last time, which was the Axis. Yeah, from Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball. Just, Ernie Ball Axis. Yes. Cheaper than a lot of them. I think just as good a quality, and it covers both acoustic and electric. So yep. can't really argue with that one. I mean, I know there's guys that probably. Play that shit a lot more than I do, so I because I think Jake always has some good recommendation for guys that play acoustic and want something that kind of matches the acoustic. Because um, Ky- Kaiser makes is that really okay? good ones too. They're the trigger capos. There's a lot of good shit out there. Um, Kaiser makes really good ones, but I mean, I think I like, the multi-use ones are cool just because like if you're first getting into it, 
you know, at least at the shop, it's an like easy one to step into to see if you like it. And then it, it works for all of your instruments, not just yeah, one. Not just one thing. So, yeah, because, like, we do have a few guys that come in and have bought, like, two or three capos. And it's like, at that point, you know, you're, you're 45, 50 bucks in on capos when you could have had one for, like, 15 bucks that covered both. So, yeah. So, yeah, usually that's the answer I go with. but uh, Or just uh, don't play it open chords. Yeah. Just tune better. I'm just going yeah, to. Different, <laughs> different tuning. <laughs> Yeah, just get a different guitar. Yeah, there you go. We're giving just you a new excuse. Another buy another guitar, put it in a different tuning, and, and you're good to go. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Here you go, Zig. Hold on to that for us, buddy. You got that, pal? He's like, whatever, bro. Oh, it's too, it was too, it was too much. Too cumbersome, yeah. He's like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't wear the button. I can't carry the button. Stretch. So you stretch instead. All right. That's, <laughs> we, we've... We've dropped off. Yeah. All right, I think that's it for the week. Uh, stick with us. We'll have another FAQ for you guys next week. Um, and we'll have some vloggy bits and other shit coming for updates with this place as soon as things get happening. Yeah. So um, that's it. All right, we'll catch you guys on, on the flip side. side.